What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And in today's video, we are gonna be talking about OpenAI's new releases, one being the new Canvas feature that they just literally launched today, and two being the new dev day announcements that they've been talking about. They launched two days ago. We got real-time API, vision fine tuning, prompt caching, and model distillation. The team has been absolutely on a roll. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so we're going to start off by talking about the new Canvas feature that just dropped today. Um, also, we will be going over, like I said, the dev day announcements. So we have real time API, speech to speech, uh, vision in the fine tuning API, and then prompt caching and model installation. Now, uh, you can see here, Sam's, you know, been tweeting out, out about all this. He said, check out the Canvas in GP, uh, chat GPT. And then he said, you'll get AGI too. Don't worry. And now it's live for 100% of uh, plus users. All right. So you check out the canvas blog post here. I'm not going to read through it all, but we can see here it's a new way of working with chat GPT. We can see the image right here and it's essentially looking like sort of like a Google doc within chat GPT. So we're introducing canvas, a new interface. We're working with chat GPT on writing and coding projects that go beyond simple chat. Canvas opens in a separate window, allowing you to use chat GPT to collaborate on a project. This early beta introduces a new way of working together, not just through conversation, but by creating and refining ideas side by side. Canvas was built with GPT-40 and can be manually selected in the model picker while in beta. Starting today, we're rolling it out for ChatGPT users, blah, 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 blah. And we also plan on making it available to free users when it's out of beta. All right, so better collaboration. You can do suggest edits, adjust length, change reading level, add final polish, add emojis. All right, it also has a coding canvas. So um, this canvas feature is somewhat similar to something like Claude Artifacts. Now, there are some, I guess, pros and cons with each. We'll go over those in just a second, but uh, coding is an iterative process. It can be hard to, to follow all the revisions into your code and chat. Canvas makes it easier to track and understand chat GPT's changes, and we plan to continue improving transparency into these kind of edits. The coding shortcuts include review code, add logs, add comments, fix bugs, port to language. All right, so basically it's saying that the model knows when to open a canvas and a few following core behaviors. So triggering the canvas for writing and coding, generate diverse content types, making targeted edits, rewriting documents, providing inline critique. All right, so one thing that's kind of cool to note is that we use novel synthetic data generation techniques, such as distilling outputs from GP01 preview to post train the model for its core behaviors. This approach allowed us to rapidly address writing quality and new user interactions, all without relying on human generated data. A key challenge was defining when to trigger Canvas. We taught the model to open a Canvas for prompts like write me a blog post on the hip of the history of coffee beans, while avoiding over triggering for general Q&A tasks like help me cook a new recipe for dinner. For writing tasks, we pri prioritized improving uh, correct triggers at the expense of correct non-triggers, reaching 83% to baseline zero shot GPT-40 with prompted instructions. Here we can see the Canvas decision boundary trigger, writing and coding. Okay, so without ado, let's dive into the Canvas. Okay, so if you don't know how to access the Canvas, it, well, if you have a Plus uh, account on ChatGPT, you simply just come up here and you can access it right here, GPT-40 with Canvas. So um, like I said before, like it says in the blog, this was basically trained with synthetic data um, from 01, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to start off with a prompt, and I feel like this is a good prompt because... Um, for those of you who you know maybe haven't been caught up with dev day yet dev day was two days ago and like i said at the start there were some pretty cool announcements but opposed to me reading through each and every blog post because there's about four different blogs they posted on from dev day we're gonna help get canvas to generate a um basically a summary of everything that happened on dev day so i'm gonna go to each individual blog and i'm basically just going to copy the text here Okay, so my prompt here is I'm creating a YouTube video about OpenAI's dev day and need a one pager summary of all the key points. Here are the four different blog posts. And then I pasted the four different blog posts. 
Okay, so we're going to run this command here. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents. AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. And boom, as you can see, the canvas has opened up and it's officially generating our response here so just to quickly go over what the ui looks like as you can see we got our chat bar on the left hand side so we can basically chat to it over here you'll see it's quite long right now so here's a concise high quality summary for your video on openai's dev day announcements hope this summary works for your video let me know if you want some adjustments okay so then you can kind of click on it and uh, if I close this out, you'll see it's somewhat similar to like how a Claude Sonnet artifact looks like. We can open it and reopen the canvas here. Now on the bottom right here, you'll see we have this little uh, pencil icon that basically has a window here. This window has different options such as add emojis, add final polish, reading level, adjust the length, and suggest edits. So we'll do some of those in just a second here. But first off, let me kind of go through some of these um announcements here so we can kind of get a gist of what you know first off these what actually happened in dev day so the real-time api for voice interaction open ai introduced real-time api enabling developers to create natural low latency multimodal voice applications this api supports six preset voices and allows seamless speech to speech experiences it eliminates the need for separate models for transcription reasoning and speech synthesis Enhancing both speed and natural interaction, the API will support advanced use cases like customer support and language learning with price based on text and audio tokens. Additionally, an audio feature for the chat completions API will soon be available. And the second thing is vision fine tuning in GPT-40. OpenAI now offers vision fine tuning, allowing developers to improve GPT-40's image processing and capabilities. This upgrade supports applications like enhanced visual search, object detection for smart cities, and medical image analysis. Vision fine tuning has shown real world success, such as improving mapping accuracy for grab and boosting automation success rates for automat. Fine tuning with both images and text enables developers to create tailored models with better accuracy and vision style consistency. And then three, prompt caching. So prompt caching allows developers to reuse recent input across multiple API calls, reducing latency and cost by 50%. This feature helps developers save on API usage, especially in scenarios where prompts are repeated, such as in chatbot conversations or code edits. Prompt caching applies automatically for prompts longer than 1,200 or 1,024 tokens and is available on the latest version of GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini. So we've seen this in other models too, Claude or Claude, um, other models as well. And then four model distillation. So OpenAI introduced a new model distillation suite to simplify the process of fine tuning smaller cost efficient models using outputs of more advanced models like GPT-40. This suite includes tools like stored completions for generating distillation data sets and evals for measuring model performance. Developers can now fine tune smaller models to perform similarly to larger models at a fraction of the cost. Model distillation is available now with free training tokens offered until October 31st to encourage developers to experiment. So pretty cool stuff. Now you will see if we hover over each point, we kind of have like our paragraph and we can see that we could go ahead and click this plus button right here. And then we could tell it to either edit or explain this. So let's say if we wanted to say, make this shorter, more, actually no, let's say make this longer and more in depth okay so opposed from it redoing the whole entire output and having to redo like the bottom two um we're actually just editing like how you would in like a google doc one specific part of the document so we just actually edited only the first point as you can see the three or three other points are the exact same still um here it goes on to explain this more in depth 
All right, so we can also click here and we can do suggest edits. So now Canvas is basically going through this, reading this document and saying, I've added comments and suggestions to help improve the writing quality by breaking down long sentences, providing additional context and making the uh, text more concise and reader friendly. Let me know if you need further assistance. So we can see these comments here. Consider breaking this sentence into two for clarity and make it easier to read. So we can go ahead and click apply and it's going to do this for us. So it's kind of like cursor right now for, um, for like actual writing as we're seeing right here. So I could go, um, here, you might want to elaborate briefly on what a WebSocket connection is for readers who are not familiar with it. So we could go ahead and click apply. So really useful if you're a writer, if you're doing blog posts, really anything. I mean, if you're doing, if you're a business owner, you should be copywriting. Copywriting is a very, very valuable asset. So this is definitely very useful for anything in regards to that. Now, if we come over here, you can see here that we have adjust length. So we can scroll and make this like shorter, for example. All right, as you can see, it just made the whole thing a lot shorter. Now we could go here, we could go reading level and say we want to make it a little bit easier to read. So we have kindergarten, middle school, keep the current reading level, high school, college, graduate. Maybe we want to do graduate, you know, we want to sound really intelligent. Okay, so as you can see, we change the languaging a bit here. Um, we could go add final polish. Here it says I've added final polish, including section titles and improved formatting for readability. Grammar and mechanics have also been reviewed for consistency and clarity. Let me know if there are any other adjustments you'd like. And let's just say we want to have fun and we want to add some emojis and we can just click add emojis here. And would you look at that? Our whole entire document now is just populated with random emojis. Well, not random emojis, relevant emojis pretty much everywhere. Now also too, I do want to note you can go ahead and start like actually using this as a Google document and typing out your own stuff. So, so let's say you wanted to use some AI, you want to use your own writing, you could go ahead and do that and actually create like a, have a pretty good canvas or something like a blog post here. Now up in the top right, you can do previous version, you can do next version, so you can undo your history, which is good, sort of like you can do in something like cursor, you can copy the text here. All right, so that is our first canvas. Now let's say I wanted to do a second one more relating to coding. So I said, please build a snake game in Python. So now it's building the snake game in Python here. All right, so you'll see just off the get-go, we have a, a lot nicer of a UI for our code that's generated from uh, ChatGPT than the default one. So like we can even, you know, expand and contract different, uh, you know, elements right here. So similar to how you would be able to in an actual IDE. Now for the code feature, we actually have a few different things. So we have add comments. We have add logs, we have fix bugs, and we have port to language and code review. Let's say I want to do add comments. Okay, so this is useful. It's adding comments. So let's say maybe even if you're learning to code or if you just really don't know, uh, or you, for whatever reason, I'd say it's good to add comments because even if you're, you already understand the code, um, but you're coding with an LLM, and you it's actually good to have comments because it will actually help the llm know what the code is doing and be able to reference it a lot easier so it will help you it will help the llm so that feature is really good okay next we can add logs so let's say i want to add logs here okay so now it's added some print statements throughout the code to help with debugging and understanding the flow of the program okay we could go ahead and click on fix bugs i've reviewed and fixed the bugs in the code including ensuring proper direction handling to prevent the snake from reversing into itself let me know if you need any further explanations. All right, just to test things out, I'm going to go ahead and run this code. So Python snake.py. Okay, and here we have our snake game. Okay, so this is actually pretty good. We're going to go see. Oops. Let me see if I can get this. Okay. First of all, I would want to make the snake a better color. Okay, not bad though. So you could highlight, you know, different pieces of code in your uh, code here, and you could click on ask chat GPT. All right. So then you could either say edit or explain this code, All right, you can also click on code review like I just did here. All right. So now it's giving suggestions for our code. So generating, uh, generating food coordinates could be extracted into separate functions to avoid code repetition and improve maintainability. The game closed loop could be refactored into a separate function to improve code modularity and readability. Consider using more descriptive variables such as snake direction X, including instead of X one change to improve readability. 
Consider renaming snake list to snake seg segments for better clarity and length of snake to snake length. All right, we could also port this to a language. So on here, we can see keep current. We could see Python, C++, PHP, TypeScript, Java, right? So we have a bunch of different options, JavaScript. Let's go ahead and try TypeScript. Okay, so I converted the whole um, snake game to TypeScript here, as we can see. And I just asked it, okay, how would I run this? And it's giving us instructions to actually run this snake game in TypeScript, make snake game directory, npm init, install p5, install TypeScript. All right, so all, all the different instructions on how to run it so you can interact with this code. And uh, it's pretty useful, I find. I think so far, just off using this off the get-go, um, I think this is definitely a big step for OpenAI's coding capabilities. I mean, it's, it's been decent at coding in terms of the models, but just in terms of the interface, uh, definitely Claude. One, definitely Claude has really good models, uh, like Claude Sonnet, it's really good regardless. But uh, the Claude artifact, if you're using the, not through the, if you're not using cursor or not using through the API, just in general with the Claude artifact, it's a lot nicer of a dev experience. So I think this is getting close to be on par or maybe even better it's definitely better in some ways than claude sonnet the one thing claude sonnet i'd say has is just the the capability of really being able to run it within the browser um other than that though uh canvas does have seems like it has more features and i really am liking the experience of it when it comes to de uh coding as well as writing i really like how they differentiate between the writing features and the coding features i think this just makes this type of tool really really good and really useful for whatever you're doing so other than that guys let me know what your thoughts are on canvas do you think it beats claude artifacts and and also too what do you think of opening eyes dev day announcement and let me know if you've been using canvas what kind of cool things you've been building or using it for or different use cases you found with it and maybe if you found things you don't like about it let me know in the comments below why let me know what some of the improvements you would like to see on it are other than that guys that's pretty much it for this video i just wanted to give you a quick overview of the new canvas feature as well as the new dev day features that were announced so go check those out if you haven't already guys and if you're new to the channel we upload videos every single day on ai ai coding automation business growth marketing sales etc so if you like this type of content and you got some video here definitely hit that like button and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date with the daily uploads Thank you guys so much for the recent 7k subscribers i'm extremely grateful and also too guys if you haven't already joined our free facebook group and free discord channel a link to our stridecommunity.com will be in the description down below as well as all my other social platforms so if you want to connect with me you can check those out and if you run a business and you need ai appointment setters booking your leads on autopilot go check out strideagents.com i'll leave a link down below for that as well and if it looks like something that you'd be interested in book a call and we can see if it'd be a good fit or not other than that guys i will see you in tomorrow's video keep hustling keep grinding and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.